Good afternoon. I'm Scott Johnson, the lead engineer at SolarNet One Incorporated. We uh, do a wide range of research and development in computing and energy arenas, but today I'm here to show our latest prototype to you. Um, the purpose of this system is to provide an uninterruptible power supply to uh, the premises uh, to which it's installed. Um, to that end, we've integrated four Electrodacus SBMS 4080 charge controllers. These devices have individual leads that go to each terminal of every battery cell in the system. Those are lithium phosphate iron batteries, um, a total of 32 cells at 3.2 volts a piece, four series strings. Themselves, these two strings series together between these charge controllers, these two strings series between these charge controllers, and finally parallel here to create a nominal 48 volt system across this pair of shocky diodes mounted on the seat sink. These individual leads going to the cells perform a couple of functions. They monitor voltage for us on each cell to make sure we don't have under or over voltage conditions on each individual cell, uh, as well as providing a balancing mechanism whereby 100 milliamps of current can be drawn from a cell that is higher than the others and delivered into a cell that's lower than the others to keep the batteries in a relative state of balance. And we try to achieve that to a resolution of about 10 millivolts or better to have all the batteries balance at that level. Um, we're using wiring and breaker bus bar hardware from Metro Electronics. We're using the T-Spec line of wire and breakers and these Raptor bus bars to aggregate all the leads together. The SBMS is open source hardware, so we uh, actually have the plans, the uh, source code, the bill of materials, and all the design schematics required to modify this device if we so choose. Um, all of this is being powered by a four kilovolt solar array that was installed here in this custom awning on the south facing side of the building. These are 16 up solar 250 watt panels. They're broken down into four circuits of four panels parallel per circuit. Each of those drives a single SBMS 4080. And together they form one large nominal 48 volt array. See the interconnection wiring and where we go through the, uh, through the wall here. These flex square boxes have individual breakers for each panel. So in the event of a single panel failure or damage to a panel, the entire system is not compromised. It's all isolated. And all of that together drives this Radian 8048A inverter from Outback Power Systems. Uh, we've had a lot of success with Outback in the past, and some of their more advanced features of this device is why this was chosen here. We got the load center with it, the GSLC load center, uh, which made things very easy for the integration of the system. Dual battery breakers with a ground fault detection here, generator input, grid input, this is a bypass circuit that allows us to take the inverter out of the, the loop uh, for maintenance. And of course, here's our AC output to our critical load panel.
which is powering about 85% of this house. When the batteries are full, the charge controllers go into a state where they'll shut the panels off so as to not move uh, excess energy, particularly when there's no load being drawn. However, that's not the case here. We're drawing the load and we've set the cell voltage of this grid inter interactive inverter to be slightly lower than the full voltage of the batteries. So after initial full battery charge, the batteries will never quite get full again because once they approach full, then the inverter will pick up the job and sell the excess energy from the panel array back to the power grid uh, at the given rate. Here we have the Mate 3 controller and the Hub 4 interconnection device that is associated with the outback inverter. And currently our batteries are pretty close to topped off. And we're selling excess back to the grid. So the, the house is powered by the batteries via the inverter? Yes, in the event of a grid failure condition, what's going to happen is this inverter is going to seamlessly kick over to battery and solar power uh, if the sun's up, or if the sun's down, it's just going to fall over to battery power. Uh, if the batteries get depleted, such as a huge load being run for an extended period of time on the battery bank during the night, um, then the backup generator will kick in and provide power for the load. Uh, we try to avoid that because the generators really don't produce as clean a power. Uh, we were really picky on the pure sine wave inverter we ch ch chose here to make sure we had the cleanest power available. Um, now, viewed in by itself, this is a suitable off-grid or grid interactive power system uh, that could be used in a home to power the home, to sell any excess energy back into the grid. But in this particular property, it's just a piece in the puzzle to solve a larger problem. The larger problem being the homeowner already had 10 kilowatts of grid tied solar panels installed, and those were interconnected to the grid via means of uh, micro inverters, which, um, if you're not familiar, they're installed uh, directly underneath the panel to the MC4 connectors, they plug right into the back of the panel, and then we have a 240 volt AC line that comes out of that and connects back to the grid to power loads locally in the home and to export power to the grid if excess production exists. Um, what we're running into there is in the event of a grid failure, all 10 kilowatts of panels on the roof become useless because of UL 1741's uh, anti-islanding provisions, which uh, state that those inverters must shut down if they don't see a 60 hertz grid signal from uh, the utility. Um, this leaves a homeowner stranded, uh, producing plenty of power, but not able to access it or deliver it into his boats or home uh, in the event of a grid failure. Uh, so the primary purpose of this is to provide the stable 60 hertz grid signal that will power the loads in the home. Um, in order to be in compliance with UL 1741, the next stage of this project will also isolate the home completely from the power grid in the event of a grid failure and includes a small microcontroller that talks to both the radiant inverter and mate controller and the envoy which controls the um, microinverters so that production from the microinverters never exceeds the load at the house at any given time thereby, thereby we don't run into a, a problem of where do we dump the excess power we can just simply shut it off uh, or bring it back up as necessary to match the given load demands of the property at any given time uh, essentially creating a kind of a mini grid or a, a, a switching station if you will that um, will allow the full capacity of the grid output or of the uh, solar output here to be used even in the case like we get here in Florida of a, a, an extended power system failure due to a hurricane or other similar occurrence. 
We're in Central Florida today and the sun is out, the grid power is on. How is the house being um, powered right now? Because I know you have a, um, you have the solar power canopy that we installed for this project, but there's also um, a separate solar array on the main house, which has um, microinverter inter integration. So how exactly is the house being powered right now? Well, the house is being powered pretty much completely by the solar array right at this point. 85% uh, of the circuits in the home are wired into the sub-panel right here. This is, is driven by this inverter, which gets its energy from this battery bank and the canopy solar array. So our, our load right now is below what the production of the panels uh, on the canopy array is at. So we're able to take all of that energy, apply it into the load. What's left over since the batteries are already charged to full is being delivered uh, back to the grid and sold back to the grid at this point. The other 15% of the house, the circuits that are wired into it, are connected directly uh, to the grid and to the 10 kilowatt solar array on the other part of the building and that is uh, providing sufficient power I'm sure to power the loads that are there and export the remaining back to the grid. Okay when the sun goes down tonight then how will the house be powered? Well the house will be powered by the grid mainly. We'll discharge just a little bit of battery um, to about 98 percent charge on the battery and then the inverter will say, okay, that's the end of our cell voltage. It's time to, uh, to stop selling uh, power from the batteries and the solar panels. So the grid will power the majority of the house, actually all of the house, uh, at that point. Now, if we were to have a grid failure at night, the batteries would take over, and this inverter would power um, the 85% of the circuits that are here on this load pad. Okay, and that happens automatically? There's a sensor? Yep. yep. It just says, oh, it's like a UPS on your, on your uh, computer system. Okay. Okay, so say your customer um, doesn't want to save that 98% battery capacity for an emergency situation. Would you be able to um, uh, use up that battery bank and say just have maybe a three-day um, emergency battery supply instead of a seven-day emergency? Yeah, battery. absolutely. The Outback inverters were, all came from a, from a lineage of off-grid inverters. That's the specialty of the Outback Power Company's off-grid inverters. So this inverter uh, will perform wonderfully in that situation. Um, it's a different mode that the inverter has to be put into, however. That's, I believe, um, Outback calls that, uh, depending on which parameters are changed, a uh, off-grid mode or a grid zero mode. Grid zero is connected to the grid, but it attempts to use all the renewable resources first before falling back on the grid to provide any energy. So that would be similar to the condition that you're describing. Uh, a completely off-grid system obviously couldn't ask the grid for help if it ran low, uh, so it performs a little differently and functions a little differently. But yes, any homeowner who wants to use those batteries to uh, take the energy, or business owner, to take the energy that they've stored during the day and apply it at night can do it with this. It's just a matter of changing the setting in the, uh, in the inverter configuration. Okay. Okay, now in terms of um, making more of these systems for um, customers for the future, um, can you give me an idea about the availability of these electrodacus um, charge controllers because I know that this was um, a first run prototype um, charge controller system with limited availability. That's, that's correct. Um, there, there are a few of these units available. Uh, however, to implement this system again, um, these actually aren't standard SBMS 4080s. These are what uh, the designer calls an SBMS 4000 model in, this, in the firmware. Um, and the, the reason for that um, is the load MOSFET had to be removed and a shunt had to be applied in its place uh, on these units to make them work in 48 volt operation. Um, 
So pretty much all of these have been sold and they're gone. However, the next version of this device uh, will handle much larger amounts of current and will be able to handle 48 volt systems with individual uh, connections for each battery, uh, sense leads for each battery here like this. We'll just have a, a larger bus of these essentially. So I would expect those available in about five to six months and one of those devices will be able to take the place of both here. So were we to redo the system with the newer model that's coming out, we would only require two charge controllers, one here and one here. Okay, and um, maybe you can explain Okay, so I know we're not quite finished with this overall project. Can you tell me what phase th uh, three of the project or the next phase of this project is going to be? Well, I know it has something to do with the other solar panels. Phase one of this project. Phase two of this project oh, okay. will um, isolate the building from the grid completely in the event of grid failure. And it will install a device that will control the microinverters output so that the current amount of power being generated by the building it matches the amount of power being used by the building. Okay. And I guess you can't sell back to the grid when the grid's down. That's right. They, they, <laughs> they can't buy in that, in that case. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm still confused, but um, oh well. It's complex. Uh, this would confuse uh, even the most, in fact, it did confuse several electricians who came here to examine this to determine whether they were going to be able to do part of this work or not. It confused them significantly. And okay. those are trained master electricians, so don't, okay. don't feel bad. All right, I guess we're done. I guess we're done. How is the house being powered right now? The house, the, the we have five hamsters on.